and good afternoon, everybody. Um, and before we dive into all the nitty gritty and, and all the things that we're going to be talking about today, just going to go over some of our uh, Spanish interpretation uh, instructions and we'll begin. So this meeting uh, will have simultaneous Spanish interpretation. As a participant, you will need to choose a language, either English or Spanish, to listen uh, in Zoom. And if you uh, do not choose a language, you will, of course, not be able to hear the presentation. So some of the instructions around that is in your meeting slash webinar controls, click interpretation, uh, click the language you would like to hear, and an optional instruction if um, to, to hear the interpreted language only, uh, click mute on the original audio. And with that being said, welcome everyone to uh, the CHW documentation and referral systems webinar. Uh, we are all excited for today and of course grateful once again to be um, in community with you all. So of course, before we start a little bit about me, my name is Jamal Perry. I'm a trainer with Envision Equitable Healthy Communities Training and Technical Assistance Center. Uh, I'm currently located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I have deep roots in community and doing CHW work. Uh, most of the CHW work um, that I was involved in was in LGBTQ plus health promotion, as well as anti-violence advocacy uh, and health equity, as well as sexual health education. And the Envision team and our partners are so excited to have the opportunity to be working alongside you all once again and for many more webinars to come. And of course, uh, just to start off this time together, I just wanted to highlight some of the agreements um, for the kind of learning culture we want to create here. So first, complexity. There are multiple truths and a truth is not the same as the truth. Uh, curiosity, uh, we lean into what we don't know and struggle together. Voice, participate thoroughly and make space. Um, a good acronym to consider, of course, is wait, why am I talking? And of course, uh, my favorite non-closure, uh, that we will go where we need to go and be where we need to be. We can offer first drafts and build from there. And there are many starts to these conversations and ideas that we'll be going through, but it's okay that if we, we don't finish or get to everything today. And moving on to our agenda, uh, just a little, a little context there. Uh, will be um, breakout rooms today uh, and what we're calling them as peer-to-peer -peer learning collaboratives. So we will have our opportunities to break out and just think deeper about all the the, the information that we're getting today and, and bring our wisdom and ideas to our topics. Um, but uh, we will give an overview of Envision, uh, our common indicator presentation, CHW documentation, of course, our breakouts or learning collaboratives is what we're trying to stick with saying, and uh, documentation and referral approaches, and then we will wrap things up. So a little bit about who Envision is. So uh, in the Envision CHW Training Center, also known as Envision, is composed of community health workers and community health worker allies who work together with financial and administrative support from the CDC to elevate the role of CHWs. Uh, Envision supports the CDC recipient organizations and the CHWs they partner with to address COVID response and resilient communities, also known as CCR. Uh, development for the CHWs by CHWs. Um, this four-year project encompasses the CHW movement as a whole and trains and supports CHWs, uh, concentrating on capacity building and the sustainability of a strong capable CHW workforce. And with that being said, um, I will hand it off to uh, Kira and Noel to go over the CHW Common Indicators project. So let's give it Thanks. up for now. Thanks, Jamal. So hello, everybody. Thank you for having us. Oh, and thanks, Envision Team, for having us. My name is Kira Rodella. She, they pronouns. I am one of the co-leadership members 
of the CHW Common Indicator Project. And I'm here with my colleague, Noelle. Would you like to introduce yourself, Noelle? Sure. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Noelle Wiggins. I'm also part of the leadership team for the Community Health Worker Common Indicators Project, and it's a pleasure to be with you today. Awesome. And we want to note that we are missing a couple of our other team members, Victoria Adewami, uh, Penny Jewell, Susan Mayfield Johnson, and Kenny Mays. But we are, we're happy to be here with you all. Um, may I get the next slide? So what we'll do, because we, there was a previous webinar, we provided an introduction to the CHW, the CI project and the indicators that we developed. Today, we're going to focus just on indicator number three, which is our CHW facilitated referrals. Um, but for those who weren't in the last webinar, and to make sure that we're all on the same page, I'm going to just review some basic information about the CI project. Um, actually, can we? Go oh, back a slide, that's not the correct one. So we'll pause there for a moment. Um, just to do a run through, the purpose of the CI project is to contribute to integrity and sustainability, the viability of CHW programs through a collaborative development and ad adoption of a set of common process and outcome constructs and indicators. Um, our long-term goal for the project is to increase understanding and appreciation for what CHWs do to promote sustainable funding through the collection of consistent data, which we feel will help build a solid evidence base promoting sustainable CHW funding, uh, to maintain the integrity of the profession by collaboratively choosing process and outcome measures that match with optimal, optimal CHW practice, and also to contribute to this grassroots CHW programs through easy to use indicators um, that allow programs to reliably report outcomes to funders. So that's, that's our goals as a CI project and some ways, thank you. Um, we've been working on these goals since 2015. Um, and some of the activities that we've been able to accomplish in our time together, if I can get the next slide. Awesome, thank you. Um, is like I mentioned, to develop 10 process and 10 outcome constructs. We have built a constituency over 230 individuals across 35 states. Um, we have been able to present at some pre-ABHA meetings. Um, we've had some national summits, peer-reviewed publications, and we're some of our work is currently funded um, through the CDC, in which we were able to develop 11 priority constructs. And, um, which we'll talk some more about. But what we are excited about, and one of the things that is core to our work together, is having our project be CHW led and developing CHW leadership. Um, our team is currently 5050 CHW and ally. And we also have a four person CHW council that provides an input in all of our decision making. So if we can get the next slide. Thank you. Just briefly, these are the 11 priority um, indicators that have been developed so far through our CDC funding. And as I mentioned today, we'll focus on the CHW facilitated referrals. We also will drop a link in chat um, to our indicator grid so you'll have access to these um, for your reference. And I can get a next slide. Should be a brain. Mm -mm. That's okay. So if you can back up one, please. We can leave it there for now. But one of the things that we, we do in our, in our team is we just pop it. And I really wanted to do a quick, quick brainstorm to get everyone thinking. Um, and the question that I wanted to brainstorm with you all, and you can drop it in chat. You can unmute if you want, if you're brave enough. But the question is, what would be important to include in an indicator of for CHW facilitated referrals? That's that's what I'm wondering from this group. Ah, there it is. Thank you. Kira, can you can you clarify that question or repeat yeah, it? Yeah, I can definitely repeat it. So what would be important to include if you were building an indicator to measure CHW facilitated referrals? What would we want to measure 
if we were measuring CHW facilitated referrals. Maybe I'll say it that way. Of referrals. Referrals, what organizations are being referred to? Mm -hmm. the... Yeah, so what organizations are being referred to? Thank you. Number of referrals, type of referrals. Thank you. Referrals follow through. Definitely. How many people they refer and access to the resource? And what barriers they encountered? Yes, absolutely. Referrals based on assessments. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. And we'll just make it quick because we have the 10 minutes, but you guys are definitely on the right, on the right track. Um, what I want to do is show you what based off of stakeholder engagement, based off of um, some lit review, this is the um, indicator of how we've developed it based in all of those things are taken into consideration. So I'll actually pass it over to Noelle to go over our indicator three. Wonderful, thank you, Kira. And if you could, yes, if you, perfect, that's the right slide. Okay, so um, we wanted to share a little bit about our indicator number three, which is CHW facilitated referrals. Um, first of all, the definition of this referral is it's completed referrals that are facilitated by the community health worker through which the participant receives attention, care, and or the resources they need from a clinic, another health care or social service agency, or some kind of a public service. Um, the reason that we think this is an important indicator to measure is that making and facilitating referrals for community members to needed and appropriate services is connected to at least seven of the 10 core roles of a community health worker as defined by the CHW core consensus project, which serves as a guiding list of roles for many of us in this field. And finally, our recommendation for how to operationalize or use this indicator is that it be included in CHW encounter forms or other forms that are used to track community health worker interaction with community members, whether those are individuals or groups, and it could be either a paper form or a digital form. Um, so let's move on to the next slide, and we'll look at what the indicator actually looks like. Okay, so it's basically composed of four questions, um, which are, as we've mentioned, recorded by community health workers in every individual encounter, whether that's an in-person encounter or a phone encounter. So the first question is, did you make a referral, yes or no? Number two, if the answer was yes, then what type of referral? And here you include appropriate response options and those appropriate response options may differ depending on your program and your setting. Third question is, did the participant receive what was needed? And obviously this is gonna require follow-up in some way after the referral is first made. And then number four is, if the answer was no, if the participant didn't receive the needed service, why? And this answer can either be in the form of response options or a free response. Um, we consider a referral to be completed when a CHW facilitates the referral and receives confirmation that the participant has been connected to the referred service, either through self-report from the participant um, getting confirmation from the agency that received the referral or from um, some kind of electronic information system. So uh, if you can go to the next slide, we just want to point out some differences between um, our indicator number three and the performance measure. Basically, um, the, our indicator number three goes, uh, goes beyond the performance measure. So the performance measure that we've probably all become really familiar with, it's CB6 or IR7, and it's the number of patients that are referred for individual specific named health and social conditions that increase the risk for COVID-19. So that is question number one in indicator number three, was a referral made? The indicator goes a little bit further and asks, um, what kind of a referral was made, 
whether the referral was completed, and if not, why not? So that's a brief introduction to our indicator number three, and uh, we will have a breakout session for people who are interested in digging into that indicator further. So I think at this point, um, Jamal, we'll pass it back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Noel. I think um, our team is on now. And um, my name is Julie Smithwick. I am a community health worker and I'm the executive director for the Center for Community Health Alignment um, here in Columbia, South Carolina. And our center is part of the Envision team for technical, uh, for training and technical assistance for all the 2109 grantees. We're super excited to be working with you and helping to make sure that the CHW perspectives and CHW best practices are integrated into, into all of the supports that you guys receive as grantees to be able to do this work. Um, so uh, what we're gonna do now is myself and two of my colleagues who are also CHWs from PASOS, which is um, an affiliated partner with the Center for Community Health Alignment, um, we're going to talk about um, CHW documentation in general, um, just some concerns and some things to keep in mind as you're figuring out how to document not only your referrals, but other things that CHWs will do as part of this work. Um, we'll also go into talking about some of the ways you may begin to track your referrals and some of the options that you have and some important considerations above all, recognizing that of all of you guys participating today, you're at different parts in this process, right? Some of you have already chosen a system. Some of you are still trying to figure it out. Yes, I see your note, thank you. Um, some of you guys have already chosen a system. Some of you are figuring it out. Some of you um, are kind of halfway there in the middle. Um, so we'll go through these and, and just give you some ideas of things to consider wherever you are in the process. And then there'll be breakout groups to go a little bit deeper into um, various of your options. There will also be a breakout group with my colleagues from PASOS about the system they use and another breakout group with me if you're not sure even where to start or what questions to ask or want to follow up um, anymore on some of the considerations that I share. Next slide, please. So just so you know, um, there are a lot of options for documentation and by no means are we wanting to push you into the one right answer. Um, that's gonna be a one size fits all for everybody um, because it really has to be what's gonna work for you, for your organization and for what your CHWs are doing in the field um, most importantly. We know that there are internal databases that people have created that they're using at their health department or at their community-based organizations. Um, a lot of folks just use Excel spreadsheets. And as you'll hear from my colleague Maria in just a minute, that's uh, where PASOS um, was for a really long time before they moved to a different uh, technology. Some folks use electronic medical records, which have their pros and cons. And, a lot of times don't necessarily fit for a lot of the community-based work of CHWs, but they there are some tweaks that can be made to, to help them work. There are many case management systems out there, um, and there are social service resource locators, also known as SSRLs, and others. Um, next slide, please. Um, but to start off with, these are just a couple considerations for community health worker work. Um, whatever system you choose needs to be pretty easy and relatively quick. Remember that your community health workers have a lot of demands on their time. And right now, um, you know, they may be going to see somebody about one particular issue or concern and be, and when they get to that home, find out that that person or that family has all sorts of other issues. And so, you know, now their caseload has increased or really widened. And so whatever documentation system you're using, make sure that it's user friendly um, and they're not having to document in too many different places or too much of their time. Um, also to keep in mind, we're talking a lot about referrals today, but remember it's important to document 
all of their work. So we do a lot of different things as CHWs. Yes, we connect people to resources, but we also do advocacy. We participate in community meetings. We participate in relationship building, which is core to our profession. We do individual education. Um, we spend time calling and making connections on behalf of participants. And it's really important to represent those things because um, a lot of times what gets the most importance or what is highlighted more or where CHWs are asked to spend their time are those things that are documented. So if you're not able to document the amount of time that, that we may spend um, building community relationships, it's almost a sign that we shouldn't be spending time in those things. So we wanna make sure to give the CHWs an option to document those activities. And I wanna point out here that um, in the common indicators, common indicator number two is actually speaks to that. Um, the amount of to which you are actually being able to document the, uh, the core roles of a CHW. So that's another one you might wanna look at. Um, and then this third piece, as CHWs, we wanna be able to see the results of our work. So it's great that we document and put into a system, but it's even better and, and much more um, recommended if we can also run a report or receive a report on a regular basis to see the, the work that we're doing, where we are in our goal setting, which participants we've been able to get closed loop referrals on, and to be able to see you know, where we are, where we need to focus more and celebrate the outcomes of our work. Next slide, please. And so I wanted just to spend just a minute here on what social service resource locators are. So these are called SSRLs. Um, here in the middle, you'll see a number of the ones you might be familiar with. Um, some folks have heard of Aunt Bertha, or sometimes it's called Find Help. Um, Unite Us is another, Well Sky, which used to be Healthify, Charity Tracker. There are a number more of these SSRLs. Um, and they've got some pros. They also have some challenges. And I'm not going to read all of these for you because you will have access to the slides later. But um, they can be a good way to track your referrals and who you're referring to in if um, those agencies get the referral and then what is done with those referrals. So you can communicate by sending out a referral to an agency, they get it, um, they handle the, the issue or connect them to that resource and then ideally um, document back into that system. And then you can track and run reports of, of all of those referrals. Um, some of these programs allow people to manage their own referrals and actually get in and um, sign up for eligibility programs, not all of them, but some of them do. So there's some definite pros in partnering with one of these systems. However, we also wanted to highlight that there can be some challenges because we don't want folks to think, oh, I need to, you know, um, contract with and spend our money on one of these SSRL systems immediately because this is going to meet all my needs. The idea of closed loop referrals that Noel referred to as, you know, in that common indicator number three, where a community health worker makes the referral and then the participant gets that resource that they need. And then that loop is closed. So now the community health worker and the participant, everybody knows that that resource was actually achieved or not achieved, but it was closed off, right? That is only possible if the organizations you're referring to also use the system. So if they're not, then you, you'll be referring out to those agencies, but you may not get information back. And so your CHWs still have to do the work of calling the participant and saying, hey, did you get that housing assistance? Did you get that, uh, you know, were you able to go to that shelter, et cetera, et cetera. These systems can also be very expensive. So we've had some grantees saying, you know, it's great for right now when we have CDC funding, but what's gonna happen afterwards, right? When we don't have CDC system funding and we've got uh, this system in place. Um, again, a lot of these systems depend on other people putting in resources and answering the referrals. So if the other organizations are not putting their information in, then you're not gonna have a very robust system or a robust group of referral places to, um, to give to your participants. 
There's also sometimes some challenges with integrating with your existing data management platforms. So if you're a health uh, um, department and you're already using a management platform or you're a CBO, community-based organization or a clinic and you already are managing your data in one way and you overlay one of these social service resource locators, sometimes, and a lot of them can actually help you try to integrate those systems, but some of them don't let you. And where that ends up is that the community health workers or the people doing the work are documenting in multiple systems and that can take a lot of time. So these are just things to think about and talk through before you make your decisions, right? And then there's that piece of what about all those other roles um, of community health worker work, right? When you're doing all those other things that are above and beyond referrals, where are those things gonna be captured? And some of these systems may have a place to do that, but it's certainly a question to ask before you just kind of jump in and, and uh, really attach to one of these systems. Um, again, there will be some breakouts on a couple of these systems. So if you're interested in digging into it more or talking to your colleagues about their experiences, please join one of those breakout rooms. So now I'm gonna pass it on to my colleagues, uh, Maria and Yahaira who are gonna go into one of the systems that they use, which is not an SSRL, but it is a case management system that they use to track their work, just as an example of one way that a community-based organization has, um, has tracked their work um, as CHWs. Next slide. Hi everyone, I'm Maria Martin, Executive Director for PASOS. And so now we get a, a little sort of window view into what using a, a system can look like and what it can do for you and your team of CHWs. Um, at PASOS, we first started with all of this paper documentation and having these uh, sort of sheets of documenting and counting our outputs. Um, also this note taking and eventually we moved into spreadsheets, um, but as you can imagine that becomes overwhelming um, pretty quickly and so in our search for a practice management software um, case management uh, software that would work for us, uh, we did find that apricot was one that would just work for us because um, we just trusted that um, the way that it was built and the mission that they have is to work with their clients so that we get to create and use it based on specifically our needs and we can create forms and the tools that we need based on what we have decided as an organization is important for us to record in our activity. It's also been easy for us to use. Um, and so that is why we chose Apricot. Um, next slide, please. And so uh, what we have found, um, you know, has helped us record the, our activity um, is that, you know, we have the forms that help us collect program progress. And each of the activities, as you've heard Julie say, community health workers, we really do a lot of work. We know that when we're addressing one specific um, topic with a family, it often becomes and unravels into many other needs. And so it's, it was very important for us to be able to have um, a system where we could collect each of those um, individual needs um, that a family needs and also we call them pathways. Um, for, so for each of the need with a participant, community participant we're working with, um, then we create a pathway with that closed loop referral um, where we can check off, this was, you know, the, well, we create a profile, we create what is the need and where are we referring people? Did we do education? That is what, those pathways look like? And then did we achieve um, connecting folks to what they need? Um, we also um, have been able to create the system within the system, sort of our own um, social service resource locators. Um, our system really helps us connect. We're a statewide organization. And so it really helps us connect 
with the rest of our team members across the state. And we have a really strong network. And within the system that we decided to use, Apricot, um, we have a resource, all of our resources, like a database in there, we have a list of our resources. And so for each of our pathways, as we're connecting folks, we get to indicate which of those resources we used. Um, and in that way, we find it really helpful that community health workers are able to talk to each other about where the resources are um, and how to connect people. We also um, have found that, you know, being able to track the outcomes and even beyond that, we have collected um, success stories. And we've also found that utilizing um, our system, we're able to form, like create forms that help us better communicate with each other and our partners. Um, and when I say uh, communicate with each other, um, that could relate to whether we're working with a mutual partner or I don't know, everything in between, even for supervision and mentorship, um, we use these forms that help us um, check in with each other and track our progress with our work and our professional development as well. Next slide. Um, we have found that, you know, there are limitations. Um, Julie has mentioned some and some of our other um, speakers today have mentioned. Um, we know that it can get expensive. Um, it can be time consuming. Um, so those are the things that you do need to consider. Um, if you have community health workers, sometimes there's scenarios where they work within a system, you're supporting them, and they may have several different um, practice management systems or case management systems that they have to visit. Um, you never want to get into that particular situation. You want to really ask your questions. You really want to discuss with your team. What is it that we're going to need? What is essential about what we need to capture and what's going to make that easier for us? Um, always ask questions uh, in regards to like technology, possible technology limitations. We all know that we don't live in a perfect world. Even technology isn't perfect, even though it tries to show that it is. Um, but there's glitches in systems. So ask questions like, you know, what happens when uh, we can't access, you know, the system for whatever reason, or what what is what is their rate of, of glitch within their system? Just things to consider. Um, you do want to make sure that as you talk with your teams about what you need and what you're recording, what are some of these reports that you have to like generate so that upfront you're having these discussions with folks that you're inquiring to have uh, to use their system. Um, and just want to let you know that also another thing to consider is setting protocols around whichever system you do decide to use so that everyone enters data in the same way. And I know that you can pre-populate sometimes within systems, we'll, we'll say, well, if you answered this question, then it skips over to the next question and you have to respond a certain way. But it's also about talking with your team about the importance of why they're recording what they're recording so that no one misses anything. Um, because again, our data is only as good as we use our tools or we've trained someone on using the tools. And the, so those is just some considerations, but um, I will turn the time over now to Yahira, who will also go over with you a little bit more in detail what the work looks like once you're using a practice management system, a case management system. Yahira. Hi everyone, next slide, please. Could we go to, oh, thank you. Um, so my name is Yahaira Benetus Kategi. I'm a community health worker in the Southern part of South Carolina. And uh, in order to show you how we use Apricot, we will use one of our flagship programs that is PASOS Connections for Child Development as an example. So PASOS uh, Con Connections for Child Development supports parents or caregivers with children between the ages of zero or five and 
in this case, a CHW goes into the home or a place that is comfortable for the child um, to provide and complete the ages and stages questionnaire and the social emotional questionnaires. The community health worker review the results with the family uh, and the family select a goal. The, select, uh, the community health worker leaves behind a toolkit bag with more information on child development, resources in the community, and either a toy or a book, an item that will promote uh, child development. So uh, when referring to APRICAD, before we go into the home, we have already created uh, the participant, both the adult and the child that is tied to the adult. We will use uh, their names, date of birth, and other demographic information in order to create that participant. And under each participant, uh, there's a series of folders, and those folders are what Maria mentioned we call pathways. So we have, for example, an access to care pathway, we have a social determinants of health pathway, and of course we have a uh, child development, uh, connections for child development pathway. So for each intervention that the com community health worker has with the participant, we create a pathway. So when we do, when we go into the home, we carry a set of forms to make sure that we capture all of that, in, all of what we did with the family. So we record uh, the results of the SQ3, of the social emotional um, questionnaires, um, whatever any concerns uh, the parent or caregiver has, a goal that they set, and also the referrals that we make. Once we are in the office is when we proceed to input all of that information in each of the corresponding pathways. For example, in the case of the child development program, we have a pathway specific where we record the results of the ages and stages questionnaire. We have another uh, pathway that is specific to the social emotional questionnaire. And thirdly, we have the child development pathway where we record the initial information uh, resulted from our visit, the parent or caregiver concerns, and any questions that they may have, whether the child has a medical home, whether their immunizations are up to date, and any other information that we require. We also record the information provided. So we do education at the same time. So any education that is provided, we record that in that same pathway, as well as the goal that the parent or caregiver sets uh, for their child, and whether and if there is a referral needed, then we also record the referral. And like uh, Maria mentioned, we can reach a series of res re uh, resources that we have so we can connect them with that specific pathway. And it allows us to close it and set a date for follow-up also. So for example, in two weeks, um, it will remind me that I have a follow-up and actually it will not remind me, I have a, a form that I go where I see what is um, that I have uh, pending and I go into the, um, the pathway again and do the follow-up with the family. Once we do that, we will be able to close the pathway if the goal and the referrals have been achieved or we can also leave it open if the participant needs more support to connect with the resource, or if they are still working towards the goal that they set up. Next slide, please. But like um, Maria and Julie um, had been saying, there are other things that we do when we use Africa. Um, it is very important like we have been talking about um, having an intervention and closing that intervention. Um, sometimes the result is it's been achieved, sometimes it's not, but it is important to close that loop and make sure that the protocol, uh, the follow-ups were made. But there's other, there's another things that we do as community health workers that like they have been saying is very important that we record also. So for example, uh, one of the things that we do is we participate in outreach events. 
So when we participate in an outreach event, we in Apricot have created forms specific for those events. And there we can go and record um, how many participants came to the event, the address of the event, um, whether we share information specific to the um, programs or to the activities that we have at that time. So and again, we can collect that information and either selling volunteers, we can record that. Um, we also uh, have that um, those resources. We create the resources, and you know it's very common for us as community health workers, being on the on the on the field, to find new resources that perhaps another person does not know. So we have the ability to create that resource into our system, and then making sure that all of our team members also are aware of those uh, resources. Um, besides that, uh, we work with agencies and other organizations, and uh, we can record those partner organizations we're working with, and if we meet with them in a regular base or even using one uh, as needed base, we can record also all of those meetings with our partners. And also another thing, because we as advocates, uh, or we can advocate for the needs that we find in the Latino community because we specifically work with the Latino community. We also have, for example, some uh, agency feedback forms where we can uh, explain uh, the issue that is happening. It can be a positive or a negative. And then we have a colleague that usually is the one making contact with those agencies um, that we're working with. So, as we, you know, I think it's important to know that that community health workers do all those things, and it's important, um, like my colleagues have been saying, to collect that information. But also, um, as a supervisor and mentor in my area, um, there are other things that. Uh, we get from Apricot that is very useful. So we can run reports on the program, uh, the progress of programs. We also have um, embedded in Apricot supervision forms that we follow. And actually the community health worker is the one that prepares that form. So uh, they know what we're going to talk about and they bring issues they want to discuss. Um, we can, if we have volunteers, we can create some forms for that. Um, our monthly meetings are recorded also. Um, anything, any other conversations that we have with our agencies that we're affiliated, for example, in my case, I'm affiliated with a uh, federally qualified health center. We can, any notes of things happening in our agency, we can record that. Professional development, if we participate, for example, today, if I participate in this webinar, I could record that I have participated on this webinar and take some information about the things that I learned. And again, um, the goal like, as a supervisor or mentor is also celebrating also what the community health worker has achieved. So it allows us to see the work of each specific uh, community health worker and their success. Next slide, please. Thank you so much, Maria and Yahaira, um, for, for showing that system that has worked for PASOS, which is a community-based organization of community health workers or promotores, um, you know, doing this community health worker work on the ground. Um, I will tell you, as one of the people that helped implement the system, um, it wasn't this good. I see the comment in the chat about looking great. And it was not like this when we started. Um, and it, you know, it is a case management system and there are a lot of them out there to choose from. Um, but it wasn't set up to do all the things that PASOS does with it now at the beginning. So PASOS really had to, and you know, Yahida, you were there from the beginning as well we really had to work with the program developers and have somebody on staff who was constantly changing the forms and trying them out and testing them with the CHWs and re-making um, the forms um, and saying, well, this one doesn't necessarily work. We need something else. And so going to the developers and getting the support. So now it's a system that really works, but it took a long time um, to get there. And one of the things that makes me so proud to have been affiliated with PASOS and, and creating this system is as you heard from Yahida, 
it's not just about um, uh, the, the, um, the pathways, the individual pathways, right? So you have a, a parent or Yahida has a parent she's working with, does a screening, puts in those results, gets them those resources, closes that loop. That's all great. You know, and Pasos can then run a report. And I think last year you guys had 85% closed loop referral rate, which is huge for a community-based organization. It's great. I mean, it's a very, very high number. Um, so all of that is great. What makes me so proud um, also of the work of Pasos, and I encourage other organizations to do this, as you noticed on Yahida's presentation, there's also forms to track the advocacy work of PASOs. So for example, if Yahida refers to an organization and that referral doesn't work, PASOs then finds out why didn't it work? Is there a system barrier that made that not work? I.e. the organization doesn't have somebody that speaks Spanish, the person um, I went through a form of discrimination and could not get it because a worker had a discriminatory attitude. The hours of the organization were not, um, they were not conducive to the person being able to get their needs met after hours, et cetera. And then a partnership um, or advocacy pathway is created to address that need. So the community health workers then go and work with that organization to change that issue. So that's a really, really holistic way of doing things. And I'm not saying that all of your organizations are gonna be able to do all of that, but it is in a very critical part of community health worker work. And so PASOS has made the system work for its needs, right? And didn't just take a system that was like perfect because by no means was it perfect, um, but was able to really look at the entire mission of the organization and make the system work for us. Okay, so last, uh, this is our last piece here um, and just wanted to close out with some general recommendations for choosing a method based on like all that we have um, shared here so far. Um, before you choose what you're gonna use for your documentation and also for your referrals, find out what other organizations in your communities are using. Find out if there's already a system, engage community partners early so that you can find out you know, what's important to them, how do they document, how will they make referrals to you, what's the best way for you to make referrals. If you use this new system, Will they participate or is it not of interest to them? So do that early on so that you don't create something and spend a lot of money and then um, it not work later on. And try to avoid duplication. So if there's already a system being used in your community, it may make more sense to try to jump into that or find something that connects them um, instead of creating something new. And to start, just like you see with this group right in here in this picture where everybody's you know, in a, in a meeting and getting down to business, um, list out all your goals and your needs first. So think about the time it'll take. Think about the process. Think about the results that you wanna see, right? And not just those specific things, but the overall results that you're trying to get for those participants. Um, the user friendliness of the system. Uh, look at your evaluation plan, right? Your, your 2109 plan and make sure that it really will help you comply with all of those pieces. Um, ask questions of the developers. I cannot underscore that more. It was critical to PASOs at the beginning when we were implementing that system that we were able to go to the developers of the system and ask questions and bug them and bug them and bug them. Um, and they were always there to say, yes, you know, we can help you figure this out. Sometimes they would say, we don't know how to do this, but let's get on a web meeting and do it together before, you know, so that, so that we can tell you yes. Um, so if you're trying to connect with one of those systems, ask them all these questions. You know, what about after these three years? What are some ways to sustain the system? 
What if our community partners aren't using it? Can my CHW see their results, right? Remember that no system is perfect. Even with like apricot or one of these SSRL systems, um, it's not perfect. With apricot, for example, we can't input clinical data unless the community health workers input it themselves, right? We don't have um, partners on the other side that are inputting data back to us. And so it's not perfect, but it, you know, it's a system that works to meet the most needs for PASOs in a way that is also feasible in terms of funding and time and those other considerations. So thinking about like, what are your major needs and uh, what, are the, what are some of the systems that could best meet your needs? And then another one to underscore, building a system takes time. So it's really important to have somebody who's kind of dedicated to it and not just a data person, but somebody who can continually interface with your CHWs. How is this working for you? Does this make sense? Are you able to input what's not being shown? What do you want to see? You know, and, and making sure that like you're crafting your, your system to meet their needs and the people that you're serving along with your evaluation needs. So I will stop there. I will get, to, uh, I saw there was a couple questions in the chat and we'll try to get to those, but next slide, please. Um, there will be a recording of today's webinar on the Envision landing page that you'll see at the end of this presentation and on AMP. Um, but just in case anybody wanted to jot it down or screenshot it to contact us offline at another time, these are our um, websites and contact information. So feel free to reach out if you have um, follow-up questions specifically about some of the things we talked about today. But also, as I mentioned, Yahida and Maria will be in a um, breakout room talking about apricot, and I'll be in another breakout room talking about um, kind of choosing a system if you're not quite sure where to start. All right, next slide. All right, I think that is it. Thank you so much for that uh, uh, presentation. Um, and thank you all the presenters. So now uh, for about 20 minutes, we are going to dive into our learning collaborative. So I'm just going to uh, just give a quick overview and some context to what those learning collab collaboratives are, and you'll be able to choose whichever one you want to attend and and learn from each other. So um, one of the the uh, learning collaboratives that will be done by Noel and Kara is uh, just going over and deeper into the common indicator number three. Uh, we have one cl learning collaborative from Maria and Yahira on this uh, CCHA and the apricot system. Uh, Debbie and Jill uh, will be going over uh, the CCS documentation system, um, care coordination system, and data from the CHW documentation system and going deeper into that. Uh, Sherry will be in the Unite Us Learning Collaborative with plenty of information, plenty of uh, things to go over from uh, the Virginia Public Health, um, Cook County, uh, Webster Vital, um, and tons of information. Uh, so that is Unite Us, and Sherry will be in that. Um, Julie and uh, Julie will be uh, just be going over the uh, documentation and reflection piece, as well as like understanding the referral process with CHWs. And you know, if you're not sure what platform to work with or what are the options, um, this is you know space for you. And uh, Shanadora uh, will be going over the evaluation practice in general ASU. And uh, Rudy Vega will be in the Spanish language uh, considerations for CHW documentation and referral systems. And this will be in Spanish. And, uh, and yeah, so um, these are all the learning collaboratives, just to give you one more glance at uh, which one you would want to attend. I think everyone is back and good. So uh, first, just want to thank all the presenters and all the facilitators for uh, just giving some really great presentations and really great information um, during this webinar. 
as well as thanking all our participants and and, and grantees and everyone that has been in the space and just uh, taking the time to be open and 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 willing to learn and 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 share and express all our our thoughts and expertise around uh, CHW work. Um, and just so you all know, there will be a satisfaction survey poll that will be popping up uh, right as I say it. So it's just like magic uh, that you all can um, fill out and basically, you know, just asking, do you want to continue this in the community of practice? And as well as, you know, it's just some other questions. And yeah, so definitely take the time to fill that up, fill that out. Um, and it should be here and everyone should be able to see it. And of course, if there's any issues or anything, definitely write in the chat or let us know. And definitely take the time to do that before um, we end and we'll give a little bit of time for that. And yes, so well, while that's going, um, I will also reiterate that uh, for TA requests for 2109 recipients, you are able to do that in AMP, um, as well as opting into the Envision listserv and materials from this webinar, as well as webinars to look forward to, which um, there will be more uh, in April, but we will be sending out follow-ups um, from this webinar as well as future webinars through email so you can look forward to that information. Yes. So, um, so yes, that uh, does wrap up our webinar. And of course, we're going to give um, still some more time for everyone to uh, finish this poll. And And, you know, since we do have, I guess, about five minutes before closing, if there were any quick questions or any concerns or anything, you can ask that quick in the chat or coming off mute. And of course, if you are um, finished with your filling out the survey in the poll, I think it is probably safe to say that you can hop off. Um, but once again, we do thank you all for joining us for this webinar. Once again, like I mentioned, more information will be coming through email about future webinars and all things Envision and 2109.